Thank you for tuning in to another video with Mrs. Danielle DeVita. I am a relationship and femininity coach. I've been married for 13 years and my goal is to help both men and women be in relationships that's best for them. So I'm so excited to talk about the common habits of a feminine wife. And while this video seems to be directed at women, it is very helpful for men in the vetting process. You, we hear the term femininity, being feminine, thrown around on social media, online, and things like that. But I want to go ahead and talk about things that really makes you um, be a, a feminine wife, right? And so if you've listened to a previous, uh, um, previous videos, I've outlined what a wife is as an acronym. But I am going to talk about some of the reasons why you need to have these common characteristics in order for your marriage to be successful because it's not just one person that um, contributes to the success or the failure of a marriage, but it takes both parties. So if you are a woman, you wanna do these things, and if you're a man and you're looking for your wife, these are the things you should look for even in the dating process. So one of the um, things that I noticed that a common um, feminine wives are is gentle. Right? So, of course, you need to be gentle even when you are having children. But, you know, sometimes when I say gentle, this is not actually gentle to the touch. This is gentle in how you handle situations. Um, we don't really understand what it is like to be a man as a woman, but we do know that sometimes going out in the world, it's a lot of things going on that men have to deal with. And sometimes it's nice to come home and have a gentle tone. Someone speak to you gentle and quietly. I know that sometimes um, even a wife who is really, really great at being gentle when a man is deep in his emotions and um, very aggressive at that moment, maybe something is uh, angering or triggering him, a woman who is gentle knows how to quiet that storm within him, right? She knows how to um, make him to be more at peace. So someone who's gentle has a great way of... Um, making sure you don't stir up things, basically toning down the storm that's about to come. Not necessarily just in that that man's life, but all around you. So there's a gentle, quiet spirit about you. And again, this is not necessarily a personality trait that you have to be. You don't have to um, be this quiet, gentle person, but it's more of a spirit. It's more of your energy that when you need to, you know how to come across in that way. There are some men who are great at that. While they're very masculine, they're very gentle when they need to be, and it serves a great purpose for them when necessary. Um, so being gentle is very powerful. Again, this is not necessarily gentle to the touch, but you need that. I mean, imagine a woman who um, knows how to give that massage, you know, to release that tension in, in, in someone by massaging their scalp. And that's just, you know, a lot of women can remember the times when their mothers massaged their scalp when they were little, whenever they were stressed, right? Um, so that gentle touch is also great. That touch that that man needs whenever he's all stirred up. Just that quiet touch, right? Just that, that gentle tone. Just your gentle mannerism. Um, a great person, I would say, although it's um, in a on a TV show, but a great characteristic that I see gentleness is when I watch Queen Sugar, um, the one who plays uh, Dara, I think her name is, I can't remember, but um, she's, her real name is, uh, last name Lawson, so I, I don't know why I can't remember her name right now, but um, she is really great at being gentle, right? Uh, Darla, I think her name is, I can't remember, but she has a really um, gentle spirit about her, and she does know how to calm Ralph um, Angel down when needs to be. So I think that this is a great, good trait to have. The next trait um, and characteristic that you'll need to have um, to be a feminine wife, or one of the common habits that feminine wife have is um, supportiveness, right? So a lot of times when we think about supporting, we think that we're just doing and we're not receiving any benefits. Take that out of context and think about when you're on a team at work. When you're on a team at work, um, yes, there's probably one person who is in charge, who's making all the moves, but you need support of your team. You need a lot. You need the strengths of all of these people to make it what it is. It can't just be one person doing it alone. You need that support. And so every great leader knows that a good support system is what, what keeps them afloat. You know, the, the chief right? A firefighter chief. You would not have a great team if you didn't have the support of 
either lower leaders, you know, those who are under you, and then their team actually doing their job. So that's a great way of looking at being a support system. Not to say that you're just walking around like some puppet doing whatever the man says, but you're great at supporting the home front. Whenever he goes out, you can support and hold down what needs to be done. You can support him as he's going through a trying time. So being supportive is, of course, it's a two-way street. So I'm not saying that you should not receive a level of gentleness or re re receive support. I'm saying as a common habit of a feminine wife, you need to be supportive. There's a lot of women that are um, not supporting not supporting their men, not supporting their children. They just, they don't have that characteristic and it could be uh, life traumas that's bringing that, bringing about that. The next thing, which is quite similar, um, is um, cooperation. When you think about, and, and you know what, I'll even use a better word because a lot of people don't like this cooperation term when you think about relationships, but a better word would be collaboration. And so while support is very important, collaborating, being able to bounce ideas out of each other, working together as a team instead of there's yes men and yes women, right, in a relationship. But you want to have innovative ideas, work together, and come to a solution that's beneficial for all, the best decision. And sometimes that means taking your own personal feelings and thoughts out of it all for the big picture. So when you think about a job, um, when people ask the question, you know, do you work well with others? Do you work well in the team? And so the, the idea is if you are single, yes, if you like to work alone and you're working alone, do that. So when, you in, when you're in your singleness, do it and do it well. You don't have to be sad about it or mad about it. But when it's time to be in a relationship, can you collaborate with others? Can you work? Can you cooperate? Or are you disagreeable? Are you the contrarian? Is everything always something got to be something? It's got to be something wrong. And is it trivial? Is it petty? So part of that is working with the team. And sometimes your team, there's going to have to be someone that takes the lead. It can't always just be you. And just because you used to do that yourself, having that self-reliance is great. But sometimes when you're working with the team, you can't always try to be right and always be in the forefront. Again, you have to do what's best for the team. Some people have different strengths than others, and those strengths is going to determine that level of leadership. Now, we want men to have that leadership. Why? Because we don't want to be the one making all those decisions. We don't want to be the one have to do all that protecting, come up with all that money to cover this family. We don't want to be the one to do that, and we know that. We don't mind probably doing it for a little while, but we don't want that. So that is, those are some of the common habits of a, um, and characteristics of a feminine wife. Being able to um, be gentle, be supportive, be encouraging, right? So it's, it's not enough just to encourage yourself and give yourself affirmations, but are you affirming that man? Because if you're not, how is he getting that push? Again, there's a lot of things going on in the real world that men are having to deal with. When they get home, they need a sanctuary. They need a place where someone is loving on them, trusting them. And if you say, well, why do I got to do this? And why do I got to do that for them? Most likely you're with the wrong man. Because I can tell you, if you're with the right man, there's no question about that. There's no question about the support you're going to give to them. There's no question about the gentleness that you're going to give to this man, the support you're going to give to this man. So if you say, well, why do I have to support him? He doesn't support me or he's not doing nothing. I'm already financially supporting him. I'm already doing this. I'm already doing that. You're with the wrong guy. These are things that are easy if the person is already doing right by you. If this person is already protecting, providing, loving, if this person is already taking care of his children, taking care of you, gentle and loving towards you, you don't mind reciprocity in that. And if you, if this person is all of those things and you still don't want to give that, then healing needs to take process, right? Or healing needs to take place because there's a process that you've missed that you feel like you can't give all of you to them. And I'm going to do a video on that. I have a video that'll be coming soon um, about that. So definitely take the time to go through that healing process if you feel like you can't give this to that person. Because truth be told, as a woman, when we have children, for the most part, we don't mind giving that, that love to them, that gentleness, that, that encouragement, that supportiveness. Why? Because we love them and we, we see ourselves in them. And when you're with this person, if this is a person that you're trying to spend your life with, you want to see these same things because, doggone it, you don't want to have children with people who you can't see that in the father of that child. If you have that for your child, 
make sure it's a father that you also see that in. It makes it a lot easier to love that child and see that child instead of seeing you remind me of your my you remind me of your father. You look like him, you act like him, and then there's this animosity, right? This 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 it, this this hatred when you look at your child because you're seeing all of the the negative things and the toxicity in that father. What you want to see in your child is what you already see in that father. So understand that if you're a woman listening, understand that as a man, if you want that woman to, to have these characteristics and you're going to have to pour into her in that same way, you're going to have to also be the man that is not just requesting these things, but not doing something that he needs to do to request it. You can't, um, and, and let's take this out of the context of relationship, because sometimes I think that men need a level of logic, um, to understand things because so much things are on uh, social media where it's so hard to hear the truth about relationships. And so many people are, are pouring into men's head about what they need and what's demand of, the, um, what they should get and, and how they should, you know, some men are entitled to, they feel that they are deserving for all these things. They think they need a 10, a nine or eight, this beautiful, good looking wife who's feminine and cooperative. And that man is hard to deal with. That man is not getting off his lazy behind and taking the time to do the things that he needs to do. He's not taking care of his children. He's not loving. He's not masculine. He's, he's all of the things that women are the reason why a lot of women are on social media talking about there's no good men. So if you want these women, there's some things that you have to do, right? And so while a lot of men is saying, yeah, I want feminine cooperative women and who, who's in all of these things when we're watching social media and listening to people who are saying that prior to those people saying that on social media, they were trying to talk to men, but men weren't listening. But then they have this hurrah when it's going after women. So understand that if you want a feminine wife, you have to be a masculine man. And if you're a woman listening, if you are trying to be a feminine wife, you have to make sure you're doing it for the right person. Because if not, then you're going to say, there's nothing to it with this feminine thing. There's nothing to it but to um, be weak and waste your time because you gave your femininity, you gave your love, you gave your trust, you gave your body, you gave your womb to the man who wasn't deserving of it. So if you want to be able to exhibit the qualities of a, um, of a feminine wife, if you want to have these habits, you have to have the habit of a man who could pour into that level of femininity. Right, so don't throw your pearls to the swine. Don't give your body and your womb, your time and your trust for those who aren't deserving of it. So when I talk about being feminine, when I talk about, when I talk about letting your hair down, understand that this is for the man who is best for you. And there's so many ways of being able to find out who's best for you. It's called vetting. It's called not dating to date. It's called dating to be able to inspect right? This person and their characteristics and their qualities. This is why eating a steak and, 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 um, caviar or whatever you, these fancy dinners that you want to have just to say you've had it. This isn't what's going to make you vet actually sitting across from that person and asking them the right questions. What do you value in a woman? What do you value in a relationship? Tell me three things about yourself. And look at and look at the, some of the values they have. What are the values and the standards that you have? And when people can be able to tell you those values, see if those values align with yours. And it can't be superficial. It has to be fundamental values. See their beliefs and their mindset. Keep talking to them over and over and over to see if what they say and what they do are congruent. Because if there's um, some type of um, intersection in that, right? If there's something that's um, preventing them from actually acting out what they say, then this is not the person you want to put your trust in, right? You don't want to be with someone who is saying one thing, doing another, and then having the smile on their face and then battling that fence. One day they're doing, you want someone who's consistent, not someone who's consistent at being inconsistent, right? So understand that and I hope that if you are looking to be a wife and having these common habits of a feminine wife, that you're making sure that in all of this process, you're vetting. I have a whole video on the ABCs of vetting. I even have a live stream on the ABCs of vetting. I li literally give you the step-by-step -step A through Z. All right, so thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please go ahead and like, subscribe, and share my content. So thank you guys so much for watching my content and helping me get to a thousand subscribers. Take care.